It's a nice start of a video, I guess. Hey guys, it's Vane and it's the first episode of my channel. So today I decided not to raise any complex or debatable topics and instead of it we'll just visit one of Moscow sites. Frankly it's not the best weather for it because the December this year is rather dull, grey as you can see. But I think you could like this video anyway. So please welcome the Neskushny Garden. Some basic information about this place. Neskushny Garden is a part of a Goka Park and it's represented by a huge forest in the center of Moscow. It squares about 60 hectares and it's like 83 football fields. Frankly, this place is really really old and it has an interesting history. It's a landscape park, that means that it should reveal the beauty of nature. It didn't have strict structure, tracks and decoration didn't make any geometry shapes. Uh, there are a few buildings here. In two words, it's just a huge forest in the middle of city that's limited by the Moscow River. It doesn't look like a park, right? It all started in 1728. Nikita Trubitskoy, a successful military careerist, bought here territory and built here a house and decorated it with many park elements, such as a pond, a labyrinth and a lot of other things. He started to relax on this territory and he started to make luxurious balls and receptions and all of these parties became very popular among the upper stratum of Russian society. Due to one of versions uh, this territory was called Neskuchny that means not boring in Russian due to these parties. But in 1816 the emperor decided to make a summer residence somewhere so he bought this plot and destroyed the house of Nikita Trubitskoy and built his own. On the other side lived the industrialist and philanthropist Prokofi Demidov. He was very rich, so he built a real palace right here and brought to this territory a lot of exotic birds and animals. He also brought some plants which are typical for the Russian climate. He was growing pineapples and grapes here and even palm trees. That's strange, cause the temperature in winter could be below 30 degrees and it's normal for this climate zone. Prokofiev was a good man, so he opened the park to the public. Many contemporaries called this park one of the best in Europe. And after his death, uh, the park has changed owners twice and finally the emperor bought it too.
In the 19th century, there weren't all these buildings here. Instead of them, they were a territory of the third guy. But Emperor decided that it's a bit strange to have a divided residence, so he bought this territory too. All this huge territory belonged to the imperial family, but in 1917 the Russian Empire was in a very bad condition, so the revolution happened and the emperor abdicated, so he lost this territory. And it, this territory went public and a year later the whole, whole imperial family was shot. Today only the territory of Trubisko is equipped for walking and it went to Neskuchny Garden. Near it you can see the Russian Academy of Science, <coughs> but the territory of Demidov was lost and now it's represented only by the forest, the embankment and maybe some hotels and houses. Then the USSR has appeared and it included the Russian Empire. During this period of time not much interesting happened in Skuchny Garden. I can select only one attractive event. All Union Agricultural Exhibition was held in the USSR in this park. This is something like placing a bunch of thematic pavilions in one place that are united by agricultural them. We built like 255 pavilions in 10 months. The exhibition was attended not only by Russian organization but also by 600 foreign firms. The exhibition was successful, it was visited by one and a half million of people. In 19th, after the USSR collapse, The Lord of Rings was published in Russian language and it became really popular among Russians, so a fan base called Tolkienist was formed and they had regular meetings in this park. And it's rather logical because of some park elements. Other fantasy role-playing guys connected to them. In the park there were a lot of people in them costumes who walked, talked and even arranged battles on medieval swords. And now I suggest to visit the main sites of this park. It's a hunting house, the place that was made by Nikita Trubetskoy and it hasn't been restored since that period of time. Frankly, it has a symbolic name because it isn't related to hunting anyhow. The hunting house used to be a place where Nikita Trubetskoy was observing the nature. Today it's a place where held ЧГК games. ЧГК что где когда means what, when and when. This is a game in which a group of people answer non-standard questions. A question is asked and in one minute you need to answer it. In this game erudition, and erudition is secondary and logic and teamwork are more important. From my point of view it's one of a small amount of interesting programs on Russian TV, but it goes at midnight, a time where few viewers can watch it. Here is a scene where singers perform between games. So, I want to give you an example of ChGK question. So, Germany was punished for starting a war in 1926 and 1948 the same way as Sparta was punished all the time. The question is how? They were forbidden to participate in the Olympic Games. And it is the summer house of Graf Orlov, the place where he was drinking a tea and enjoying the perfect view on the Moscow River. After it there were a library and a photo studio, but today it's empty.
on that place was a bath house and the imperial family took baths here in summers but it burned twice and I think one day it's gonna be reconstructed Sorry guys, I made a mistake, it is the real best house and it is under the reconstruction right now, as you can see. And it is the pond where the imperial family were taking baths in the summer. And this is Rotunda in honor of the 800th anniversary of Moscow. As you can see, it's a great place for summer get-togethers with friends. Important moments of Moscow history are reflected in this Rotunda. For example, here you can see the year when the Moscow was founded. And here you can see the year when the Second World War was ended. I'm shooting this video on a weekday, so today there aren't a lot of people right here. Mostly senior citizens and uh, parents with their children. Uh, but on weekends uh, a lot of people walk, enjoy fresh air, because the nature of this park has a life-giving force that helps people to escape from everyday problems and routine. Among other things, the park is a great place for sports. It's a section of a horseback riding, of tennis and table tennis. It even exists a football field here. And many, many other things I didn't mention. Finally, I love this place. I feel really positive vibes after walking here. Oscar Wilde was enjoying this place too, and I totally agree with him, because it's nice here. So, that's all I wanted to say. I wish you a good mood and saying goodbye. See you later, guys.